to the United Methodist Church in Bourne, Massachusetts, in the land of the Wampanoag. We are part of a three-church parish, which includes West Falmouth and Katamath. Welcome also to those joining us via live stream. We are grateful for your presence in worship today. Are there announcements? I see I have two printed here, and I will read them in case you did not notice them on the screen. Uh, West Falmouth UMC is offering a free breakfast for the parish next Saturday, May 20th, at 9 a.m. You need to let Diana Franks know you are coming so they can prepare the right amount of food. If you don't have email or have Donna's or Diana's email address, let Vicki or Karen know and they will convey the information to Diana. And another announcement, small group meets this Thursday at 7 p.m. at Bourne. The topic is the church year. What are we observing and celebrating? I think that's a great topic because sometimes I get a little befuddled about what we're doing and why. Please let Karen know if you are interested in attending so she may send you the preparation materials. Are there any other announcements? Wow. We'll have a brief trustees meeting here in the sanctuary after the service. Shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Any others? Short list today. Then we will begin our service with the choral intro. 
Please stand as you are able and join in singing hymn 62, All Creatures of Our God and King.
please be seated. We continue together with our opening prayer. God of holiness, creator of all things, fill us with your spirit. Abide with us, teach us your ways. Empower us to live as you would have us live in every moment. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. reading from the Hebrew Bible this morning is Psalm 66, found on pages 790 to 791 in the Red Hymnal, and I believe on the screen. Um, please join in where you see bold print, and um, the response is a sung response indicated by R, and Tatiana will start us off. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of God's praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid afflictions on our loins. You let evil lie over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us forth to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatness, with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear, all you who worship God, and I will tell what God has done for me. I cry aloud to God, who was highly praised with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened and has given me to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. And now it is with glad and joyful hearts that we offer to God a portion of what we have. Thank you. 
Pray with me. Accept these gifts, O Lord. Our hearts offer them in gratitude and praise. We offer what we have and what we are, that we may learn to love as you do and give this sacred earth what it needs to be healed and whole. Amen. Please be seated. The Gospel reading today is from John. If you love me, <clears throat> you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, <clears throat> and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, 
and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. May God's wonder be revealed to us through the mystery of these words. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, the creator of all that is. Jesus is preparing the disciples for what is going to happen next, and they must wonder what in the world he's talking about. Lent and Holy Week are not very far behind us, and we have heard stories following the resurrection about people seeing Jesus but not recognizing who he is. Things have been shaken up. The disciples have seen Jesus multiple times, but he's talking about leaving them now. And who is the advocate that he's talking about? He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. This makes us recall the conversation at the Last Supper when he was asked which was the greatest commandment. And he cited not one, but two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said that was the sum total of all the writings, the whole wisdom and tradition of his faith encapsulated. When we feel overwhelmed by the enormity of the world's grief, and when we question so many things about our lives, and how we understand our place in the world. This is a commandment we can cling to. If we're caught in a swirling vortex of news and anxiety and violence, if we're confused about how we should live in a society with so many ideas about how to live and treat each other, we can refresh our spirits with that thought. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. That is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus' words and actions are always demonstrating what love looks like. You won't find him telling people that they are unacceptable to God. You will not find him rejecting people for who they are or for what terrible things they might have done. You will not hear him talk about hell (coughs) or the wrath of God. Jesus talks about love and the nearness of God's kingdom. Today's scripture is an invitation to liminal space. It's a threshold from one moment to the next. With Ascension and Pentecost looming large on the horizon, Today we are invited to pause and just pay attention. Artist and writer Christine Walters Paintner talks about the practice of statio as a way to remind ourselves of the holiness of transitions. She writes, in the monastic tradition, statio is the practice of stopping one thing before beginning another. It is the acknowledgement that in the space of transition and threshold is a sacred dimension, a holy pause full of possibility. This place between is a place of stillness where we let go of what came before and prepare ourselves to enter fully into what comes next. When we pause between activities or spaces or moments in our days, we open ourselves to the possibility of discovering a new kind of presence to the darkness of in-between times. When we rush from one thing to another, we skim over the surface of life, losing the sacred attentiveness that brings forth revelations in the most ordinary moments. Statio calls us to a sense of reverence for slowness, for mindfulness, and for the fertile dark spaces between the goals, 
where we can pause and center ourselves and listen. We can open up a space within for God to work. We can become fully conscious of what we are about to do rather than mindlessly completing another task. In the days ahead, become aware of all the times you cross a threshold. This might be moving from one space to another, entering through a doorway, transitioning from one activity to the next, or tending the thresholds of the day, especially at dawn and dusk. Pause at each and offer a short blessing simply becoming aware of the possibilities alive in the moment. See if the threshold helps call forth the thinness of the moment, making the voice of the divine more accessible. When we are anxious, when we are fearful, we instinctively want to do something. Sitting still seems imprudent. We are sure we should be in action. But sometimes statio is the right place to be, to listen, to breathe, to look and see what God is doing. Beyond the ability or the willingness to stop for a moment is the hope that we can actually embody that place with joy. Mary Oliver's poem, I Happened to Be Standing, is just such a song of the heart. She writes, I don't know where prayers go or what they do. Do cats pray while they sleep, half asleep in the sun? Does the possum pray as it crosses the street? The sunflowers, the old black oak growing older every year? I know I can walk through the world along the shore or under the trees, with my mind filled with things of little importance, in full self-attendance, a condition I can't really call being alive. Is a prayer a gift or a petition, or does it matter? The sunflowers blaze, maybe that's their way. Maybe the cats are sound asleep. Maybe not. While I was thinking this, I happened to be standing just outside my door with my notebook open, which is the way I begin every morning. Then a wren in the privet began to sing. He was positively drenched in enthusiasm. I don't know why. And yet, why not? I wouldn't persuade you from whatever you believe or whatever you don't. That's your business. But I thought of the wrens singing, what could this be if it isn't a prayer? So I just listened, my pen in the air. That moment of just listening is statio. Experience what is so. Embody it, enjoy it, let it capture your full attention. There is nothing to fix, to resist, to change. Each moment is holy. Our living is a sacrament when we love God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. May it be so. Amen. Our hymn number 2196 in the little black paperback hymnal, We Walk by Faith. Oh, 
Please be seated. In deep silence, in the presence of God and surrounded by friends, we quiet our hearts and still our minds to offer our prayers. At this time, I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, and your requests for prayer. Yeah, hi. Um, my wife and myself and the prayer of the duty to come to the of falls this way. Excellent. Yes. <coughs> My wife, mom, dear friend Nancy called me just before I left for church today to ask me to request prayers for her and her family. She had been away on a short trip and came home to find that her oldest child had died alone. But it's, she's, I, I was amazed she could call me. So your prayers for Nancy and her family. Thank you. Thank you. Richard. I would like to thank you all for your prayers. Uh, for a month and a half, I've been on an odyssey of hospitals, doctors, Needles, patience, hope, prayer. I have a long way to go, but I believe my doctors have found out exactly where a major concern is in me. I have two more procedures coming up. Only two. But I want to thank you for your prayers on my behalf. I want to serve here until I'm 90. <laughs> And at this point today, I feel I can. So thank you so much. <coughs> Sue. Uh, the Weston family is very grateful today. We were in Rhode Island yesterday at a softball tournament, and my granddaughter was hit by a hard line drive at third base, and she just went down. The ambulance came, took her to the hospital, and fortunately, the EKG and the Excellent. Right. So she's now just out of food, so she's very mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Don't. We welcome Kathy back. Yeah. Down under. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'd just like to mention that uh, I'd like to see a nice big turnout next Saturday at West Fountain. For breakfast, I think it would be nice. I think they would be very pleased to see us blow them away with people coming to it. I think it would be very nice. Judy. Yeah, I'd like to wish all the mothers here a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Oh God of us all, prepare our hearts to listen and to be moved. Make us dare to open the desires of our hearts, and may we all pray for the things we hold close. We pray for the concerns of our church family and community, asking for traveling mercies this week as Steve and Julita and Judy head for Niagara Falls. We ask for prayers for Blanche's friend Nancy and her family as they suffer grief Comfort and protect them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that Richard is back with us, feeling better, and we ask your continued healing and grace upon him as he continues his journey to health. 
We ask for your comfort and care on Sue and Rod's granddaughter as she recovers being hit by a ball. We join Joe in welcoming Kathy back and delight in her ability to go visit her sister in Australia for a month. We anticipate wonderful fellowship next Saturday at the West Falmouth Church for the All Parish Breakfast and ask your blessing and grace and presence with us there. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks for the nurture and tender care of mothers, for those who birthed us, formed us, guided us, raised us. And we pray also for those who wish to be mothers but are not, and for those who do their share of mothering, although they have no children. Make us mindful of your commandments, O Lord, that we may walk in a way that glorifies you and that we may participate in the world's true shalom. And now we pray together the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 402 in the red hymnal, Lord, I want to be a Christian. So go forth in peace, protected by God's extravagant love. Remember always that you are a child of God and that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. When you find yourself surrounded by darkness, be the light. Honor and glorify God in every moment of your living. Amen. <laughs>